guys, welcome back to the shop, and today, oh my god, yes! So, um, Richard, a guy who uh, leaves co comments frequently, uh, leaves quite a few comments and stuff on the Facebook page thing, just want to put it out there, if you want to join me on, if you want to add, join me, god that sounds so fucking 21st century, doesn't it? If you want to go onto Facebook and add me as a friend, there's a link in the description that just says Facebook page. You can add me as a friend, you'll see loads of stuff, there's loads of chatting, people put up posts, blah, 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 blah. Feel free to put up what you want, um, as long as it's bike related, not just fucking dick pics and, you know, all these stupid other things. Not really interested in that. It is my personal, it's the only Facebook page I have, and I'm fine keeping it that way. Um, but anyway, guys chucking all sorts on there, you know, we talk about things, people put posts about problems they've got, so on and so on. Any road, so Richard has, has been in the racing scene for quite a long time, um, and I went, I popped up to Hinkley, he lives in Hinkley, and um, I popped up to go and see him because he said he had something for me, which is this. So... This is absolutely golden, and if you don't know what this is, this is a Yamaha R1 cross-plane crankshaft. A lot of people have been talking, Matt, Matt, can you do a video on cross-planes? Yes, there's some 3D printing stuff I've got to do to show you. There's a lot of cross-plane videos out there, and they basically say, fuck all, right? They just tell you what cross-plane is. They give the, you the Yamaha spiel. And no one explains really what it's all about and why you'd want a cross-plane crankshaft or why you wouldn't. Any road. Uh, recently, I put up a video, which is this. All right, here you guys go. These are the last three cranks that we've had come in snapped. So this is a 2016, 2016, 2015. This one had about 5,100 track day miles. This one was a super bike but ridden by a slow guy. And this one was an AMA bike, super stock. Look at, identical. Yeah, there's no pattern here, is there? It's just us alleging this stuff, of course. Uh, some guy in the States has um, basically these crankshafts, but they're all broken. And they all break, or all of them examples are broken basically here. Um, on the last journal, on the last crank pin, sorry, should I say. So this is an excellent specimen. The reason why I've got this is because the balancer shaft shit the bed and it nutted it there. So what I need to do is I need to quickly, you can see where it's all fucking chow chowdered up there, it's been smashed in here and it all went fucking kaput. Um, there is a lot to talk about this crankshaft. You can see there's a crank pin facing up vertically for me horizontally, horizontally but 180 degrees opposed, and then pointing straight down. So we've got up, left, right, and down if you want to call it that. There are so many aspects to this crankshaft. It is, thank you so much Richard for uh, sourcing me this. Basically he knew somebody else who had one, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this obviously died, you wouldn't want to use, after this has been butted, you never trust this ever again so on and so forth but there are so many elements to this um we can see the induction hardening there you can just see that there's all these balancing points and my god has yamaha gone to town on this thing if you just look at the throws the asymmetry the asymmetry in these in these throws is absolutely fucking astounding so they have done an awful lot of work on this crankshaft i mean a, a stupid amount Every single one of these throws is different, apart from maybe these two end ones. But every single one is different. Uh, we're going to use this as an example. There are certain aspects about it, about the actual uh, oil feed, stuff like that. We're going to go into all this. I just wanted to show you this before we get into it. What I want to do is I want to make up a stand very, very quickly um, that can hold this. I'm going to get out my the other stand I've got to see if I can, if that will fit. It should do, I think. Basically, we can have this sat here and we can rotate it and have a look at all these aspects. We're going to look at each cylinder bank in turn, uh, especially to do with the actual uh, crank throws and see how they differ and why they were different and what each one then contributes to the... Um, basically, the dynamic motion of this crankshaft. Um, it is a beautiful specimen. Um, it's a shame that we don't have a broken one because really that's what I wanted. Um... 
I wanted to see this failure myself. Um, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. You know, you've got to piss with the cock you got, as old Canadian Han says. Um, but this is just, you know, absolutely fantastic, the fact that we've got a real example. So thank you, Richard, so much. You know, and this is what it's all about. You know, th this channel is, nah, it's an all right channel. That's the way I see it. Um, people enjoy it a lot more than I thought they would. Um, but anyway, it's when guys, you know, when they contact me and say, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, it adds so much. That's why I keep on banging on that this channel is, is practically made by you guys. The shit you guys give me, you know, it's all fucking broken, 90% of it. But who cares? Because there's a lot of interesting things. We can look at these things. This thing is, you know, for a, a demonstration purposes, this thing's fucking pristine. Um, and absolutely wonderful. But like I say, it is a shame, you know, beggars can't be choosers. It's, it is a shame that we don't have, you know, a broken example. Unless your mate Richard is a fucking superstar. <laughs> so yes, we actually do. Uh, he did, you know, oh fuck, you know. Um, so we do have one. So th when when Richard said, you know, I've got a crank for you, a uh, cross-plane crankshaft, I thought, oh, oh, that's awesome. And he goes, yeah, it's a broken one. So it's, we don't have the other end. That's the only, the, the beggars really can't be choosers now. But uh, you can see this break and you can see how much meat is missing because of this cross drilling um my god yeah that's a weak point we can see a lot from this i wish we had the other side uh, but you know, like i say fucking hell this is a thousand percent um of an improvement on just having this crankshaft alone that's the beauty it's, it's a double whammy not only do we have a broken one but i have a complete one so you can see what's missing but number two is is we can kind of compare the thing as a whole system and then this actual failure. And this video isn't about this failure or anything. We're going to get to that. Um, basically, I just pick, I picked this up last weekend. I haven't really looked at it uh, properly, you know. Um, I'm going to take loads of photos, do all the usual shit. And um, I need to CAD this up and do a couple of simulations, see what uh, how much torsional stress and stuff this can take. Look at some of the harmonic characteristics Blah, 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 blah. Now, initially, I was, you know, my first impression was that it was a harmonic balance issue. I am uh, teetering, kind of, yes, but kind of no, because I didn't realise how much work they'd put into this crankshaft, as in the design of these throws. The beautiful thing what we have here is that these are different crankshafts, um, i.e. the balancing holes and stuff, and there are a few tiny differences they are very similar, like almost identical. Um, but yeah, we can have a look at the differences between one and each one. Um, would this one fail the same as this one? Yes, I believe so it would. Um, one thing I do want to make clear is that if you do have a uh, cross-plane R1, don't panic so much. This one that broke was broke during racing, and we're going to talk more about that. I haven't found any evidence yet of this just happening on the road. Um, all of these failures that I've seen like this um, from across the entire internet have always been during racing. So don't absolutely shit your pants if you've got a cross-plane crankshaft R1 because you think, oh, fucking hell. Um, as far as I know, this failure is only with the inline four, uh, the, the, yeah, the inline four uh, R1s, basically. Um, but yeah, we can see the induction hardening on here even better. But we're going to look at the manufacturing processes, why they've done certain things in certain ways, and how that has actually contributed to this failure. But I must say thank you to Richard so much. Uh, this is, <laughs> apart from that bit missing, uh, and the guy said, you know, he's probably just chucked it away or something like that. Um, this is absolutely fucking golden. So chuffed with this. You know, it's like, you know, do you want it? I was like, do I want it? <laughs> Fucking Nora. Yes, of course I want it. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but we can look at, you know, just the forging process and how the difference between the twos and how this is done. You can see the split line. Very complicated, actually, a lot of this. Um, but it's just absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be happier um, because we have the broken one. You know, I was just stretching out with that video. And that's, in a sense, why sometimes I do these videos. And I want to actually do it more often, uh, just do a video about an issue 
Um, one I will mention right now is the SV650 crankshaft. If anyone has a broken one, I, you know, it'd be great to have one if someone's still got a broken one. Um, both sides, obviously, that'd be fantastic. So you can see how that's that looks like a torsional stress failure. It also looks like a material treatment fuck up, but you know, we'll see. Um, but absolutely, you know, absolutely fantastic. And uh, yes, we're going to go more and more into this. Um, this is absolutely golden. Thank you, Rich. Richard, I don't know if you should be called Rich. Let me know in the comments, dude, or whatever. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>